Hello. <laughs> it's kind of late tonight. It's 11.45 uh, p.m. The house has finally cooled down from a hot day. And I was working with some new yarn that I got today. I went to two different Hobby Lobbies in my area. One in Brentwood, California. No sales, no stickers. <laughs> and then I went to Concord, California, which is about 30 minute freeway drive. And the yarn lady was working her way down the aisle and I felt a little pesky. <laughs> She had marked the first section down, the hand-dyed Hobby Lobby Hanks. They were about three, $3.50, $3.49, something like that. Um, I have quite a few Hanks of hand-dyed yarn that um, I really need to work with. I need to find patterns for sock weight and fingering weight yarn, and I need to work with what I already have, so I chose not to get any of those. And then I went to a thrift store. <laughs> I found a bag of yarn, $18, yellow tag, that's 50% off, of this Colinette Mercury yarn, which I've done a little research and I found that there was a location of a yarn store here in California called Big Sky. Uh, they went out of business. They're strictly, well, they didn't go out of business. They're, they're online now on Etsy. Um, these Hanks of this, um, it's very silky chain spun, like a ribbon. It's hollowed on the inside, so it, it, it's very light. Um, it's very pretty. This one has a, that's definitely true to color. It's a peachy taupe with some purples and blues in it. There were 11 hanks, originally $7.99 a piece. I would not be able to afford a garment amount of that. Um, I did open the bag in the store has no strange smell. <laughs> um, the one setback I see is that it tangles so easily. So there were 11 hanks. Five of them are beautiful. Mm, you know, workable. Beautiful. Mm, you know, still kind of one piece. And then there were six complete disasters. Yo, I summoned all the patients in the world. I brought out my, um, my cake maker. <laughs> I brought out my Oh, dang it. It's almost midnight. Um, I brought out my Swift. I have a wooden Swift. And when I was trying to cake it up, it kept nodding on itself. It's so slippery that it kept sliding down um, the centerpiece and it was just tangling on itself. It was a complete disaster. So then I tried separating it all out using the kitchen chairs. Don't know why I did that. That was a complete disaster. So I brought out my Swift. Um, I've been working with each Hank individually, trying to smooth it out as I place it on the Swift and then I'm hand balling it up. And that seems to be how this yarn, this fiber wants to be handled. Um, so far I've got three nice little tiny balls. I found a pattern. I found a very 
open worked vest, cardigan style, kimono, definitely boho chic. <laughs> so I was thinking I'm going to work up a little swatch of this and kind of toying with the idea of joining the, um, the make along, the boho make along with the 10 different, um, YouTubers. We'll see. We'll see how far I get along with this. Um, I don't know how it is going to be to, to work with it. I know it's, uh, kind of giving me a tough time. We're just getting to know each other. I know that, um, well, I feel like yarn always takes on a, a bit of a personality and I don't want to force it to become something it doesn't want to be. That's how I end up frogging stuff is just sometimes a yarn just doesn't want to be that. <laughs> so the pattern that I found is worked up in two rectangles. Um, no fancy stitch work. So this beautiful yarn will be the accent of it. Sometimes there's just so much stitch work that the colors just muddle all together and you don't get to enjoy the stitch work. And then sometimes the yarn carries the project itself. So I think that this yarn is beautiful and should definitely carry the project itself. What else have I been up to? Gosh, it seems like I've had like a different project each day. <laughs> Um, I have a swift case here that I made, made just a long rectangle and folded it in on itself. Ambulance. And what? Oh, <laughs> I made another donut. <laughs> so I made four of the donuts and they went to a school. I should be getting pictures pretty soon of the reading nook and the donut cushions. Um, and they're being enjoyed. So the lady that came to pick them up to take them to the school teacher, she has a 13 year old son. And before they made it to the school teacher, he said how much he liked them. And she told me and I'm really, really impressed that a 13 year old kid likes something crocheted, something that I did. And so um, we know they're family friends. We know them pretty well. So I asked him what his favorite colors are. What color donut would he like? And he said that he would like black and red. And I didn't think that was very much of a donut color, but I'm not gonna argue with him. I was impressed that he, that he was into crochet at all. So I went through all my yarn and put a pile together of all the blanket yarn that I have. And he picked out um, like a burgundy and a black. I think it turned out really nice. He really liked the drips that were on the um, blue one, I think, but he really liked the icing that was on the orange one. So we kind of combined it and uh, he really likes it. I'll have to get it to him right away. I just finished it up before I left to go shopping today. So we did that and, oh, I made a little fox pencil case out of, I think it was Aunt Lydia's yarn. No, it was cotton. It was sugar and cream cotton. I uh, mashed together a few different patterns. On Ravelry, they had a pattern called uh, box pencil case. And I for the main body of it, I'll put a picture at the end. And then um, I remember I did an owl mug cozy quite a while ago. Um, but I really like the ears on that one. They, they were very pointy and they had like a spike at the top of them. Looked very foxy to me when I did it. So I used those ears 
And then I used a Mikey Crochet Crowd tutorial. I made a, let's see, it was a star stitch. I made a beanie once and I remember how easy it was for that two row repeat to add a lot of texture with just two simple rows. And of course this tutorial is amazing to show and the way he describes how to do the stitches. And so I made a little fox case and I sent that to Tap Mama 37 in the Beg Brigade. <laughs> and I was impressed. The mailman got it there. I think it was, they said Monday it would get to her. She's already got it, already using it, already enjoying it. <laughs> oh man, what else have I been doing? I've been crocheting a lot. Oh. Did I show you? I don't think I showed you. So I might have already showed you. <laughs> I was working with sewing thread and I have a book called 100 Micro Crochet Motifs. And there was a couple little, I don't know if my phone will focus on that. Did these tiny little sunflowers. What do I have for scale? I got a banana. I don't have a banana for scale. <laughs> oh, Ryan has a baseball for scale. So I used sewing thread and a 0.6 millimeter crochet hook. I did a little sunflower and then a little leaf motif. And I put a little drop at the end of it just to give it some weight. Because when I was working with the thread, I noticed that it was so light that there's no oomph to it and so the earring that I picked the earring back kept coming off so I put a stopper on it and I put a little weight to help balance it out and it seems like they're hit <laughs> cute little summer earrings um gotten a few requests for them when I po both posted them on Facebook for family and friends. So I think I might be working on a few more variations of those. Um, I did make the little violets that I put into the little necklace lockets. So I could do different flowers from the book. The book's amazing. Um, really nice written instructions and the diagrams are very clear that's important especially when you're working with something so small i like that the, the designer steffi wrote it her pattern so that you're working in the spaces you're not well i guess there's a few times that you're working in the top loops but when you're working so small you're really using the count and by working in the spaces it catches your eye because the space is bigger than the than the top of the count of the row count um just small small little hook and reading glasses uh, i did go to dollar tree and pick up some 125 magnifying reading glasses <laughs> that's okay i really want to work on the smaller stuff while i can I enjoy it. Uh, it takes just as much time for me, if not a little longer, but it is about the process. I enjoy the process. Um, well, <laughs> some processes I enjoy a little bit more than others, huh? <laughs> so I'm just sitting here tonight, winding up this, this fiber, this yarn. It's so silky silky tube chain spun the color is morocco the colorway is morocco and i noticed that all of these are stamped with the same colorway i have 737 yards there's not much in each one of these hanks and the summer duster that i found on ravelry that i really really like um a medium large which is on the smaller scale for me takes 1200 
but I got a plan. It's worked in two rectangles, sewn up the back. So if I work the two rectangles and then where I would sew it in the back, I can insert a panel. I have some neutral yarn that I made a cardigan out of that's the same, the same thickness, but it's more of a cotton. So I don't know about mixing the fibers, but I'm thinking of making a panel and inserting it in the back. It's a solid color, so it won't clash with the colors I already have. Um, I think I can get it to seamlessly look like one project. I don't, I don't want to work on it and then it looks like it was an afterthought just to make it fit. It's not an afterthought. I'm going to think about it before. <laughs> um, I do that a lot. Uh, I, it's hard for me to make sure that I give credit where credit is due to the designers and, and to the way the yarn works up when I Frankenstein so many patterns together. <laughs> um, I would never take credit as it being my own design um, because I got the concept from somewhere and someone um, deserves credit for that. It's a lot of hard work. And, um, and I wouldn't appreciate it if I put all the effort and time and thought into something like a pattern and, somebody else just changed a stitch or two and called it their own. That's not fair. So I'm gonna work on this, um, maybe a little longer <laughs> and um, ball this up. It'll be much easier to work with out of the ball. I don't wanna fight and tug with it through my whole project. And I will be back in a few more days to show you what I've come up with. I might need some advice. Um, your opinions are greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope, uh, hope you had a tall glass with some ice in it today. I think it got pretty close to 100 today. You know, I try not to keep my eye on it and check. <laughs> For some reason, when I see the temperature climbing, it's just easier to just say, it's hot. <laughs> My flowers in the back are doing good. We planted some, some daisies a couple months ago and they're really filling in around the bird bath that we use for the bee water. Um, we've been keeping everything watered. I water after the sun goes down to kind of help. I don't want anything getting sunburned with the water glare. I don't want anything getting too dried out so the water will stay on it a little longer. Did notice our peach tree. Yeah, it's looking a little, little like it's making jam instead of peaches. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's all that's been going on around here. On Monday, we have that little, that little secret appreciation raffle that'll be going on. So I'll definitely be back, back, back on Monday, Tuesday. I wanna give everyone a chance. We got quite a few comments. I think it's fun when there's not so many. That way uh, it really, it truly is an appreciation. Thank you for watching my video, even though it didn't have any uh, incentive written in the title. <laughs> Shows you guys care, I care. Thank you so much for coming by and visiting, and I will visit with you soon.